The Apostle Paul, a man who had faced countless persecutions, shipwrecks, and imprisonments for the sake of the gospel, finally met his fate in the eternal city of Rome. But how did this champion of faith, who had written some of the most powerful letters in the New Testament, meet his end? Was it a martyr's death, a quiet passing, or something even more extraordinary? Join us as we explore the fascinating and controversial accounts of Paul's final days. From the whispers of beheadings to the hints of miraculous escapes, we'll delve into the history and mystery surrounding the Apostles' demise. Subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking videos on the Bible, and share this video with your friends and family to spark important conversations about faith, courage, and the enduring legacy of Paul's message. Let's uncover the truth about Paul's remarkable life and death together. Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus ruled the Roman Empire from 54 to 68 AD. Encyclopedia Britannica and most historians agree that he was a brutal, irresponsible, and opulent ruler who was famous for persecuting Christians. Perhaps one of the greatest mysteries surrounding Nero was the burning of Rome. On July 19, 64 AD, a fire began in the city that spread for six days, reignited and burned for three further days. History has blamed Nero for the disaster, implying that he started the fire so that he could bypass the Senate and rebuild Rome to his liking. This has never been proven, but regardless of whether or not Nero was involved in burning the city, he took advantage of the disaster to do two things. Build his own luxurious new architecture and persecute Christians. In Romans 15 verses 23 to 29, Paul writes of his plan to meet the body of believers in Rome while on his way to Spain. Encyclopedia Britannica lists Romans as Paul's last chronological writing, so these chapters were likely some of the last he wrote before his death. As the Book of Romans was written around 57 AD, it is entirely possible that Paul found himself in Rome in the midst of Nero's persecution following the Great Fire. Adam Clark writes in his commentary that, it is commonly believed that, when a general persecution was raised against the Christians by Nero, both St. Paul and St. Peter then sealed the truth with their blood. Prior to his death, Paul spent plenty of time in prison and on the run, so he was likely already known to many Roman officials. Because Paul was a Roman citizen, unlike Peter, he was protected from the brutal death of crucifixion. Therefore, it is likely that he was executed by beheading. Further, there is no definitive proof of what happened to Paul's body. Albert Barnes writes that it is believed either a noblewoman named Lucina buried him on her land, beside the Austrian road, or the body was taken to the catacombs below the city. However, probably no reliance is to be placed on either of these statements. Today, a church, St. Paul's Outside the Walls, stands at the spot where many believe Paul was killed. Uncovering details in ancient history is difficult, but there are some things we can definitively say about Paul's life and death. One, one seemingly obvious fact is that Paul did die, unlike the prophet Elijah or patriarch Enoch, who were brought up to heaven. 2. We can also safely assume that no matter what kind of death Paul faced, he was prepared to meet his fate. He wrote in Philippians 1 verses 21 to 24, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Paul's death could have been unrelated to Nero's attack after the Great Fire. But no matter how he met his death, Paul's life laid a crucial foundation for the Christian faith. The Apostle Paul had a certain mindset that Christians are wise to emulate. His attitude included 1. Humility Pride cannot hide in the heart of a believer who understands divine mercy. Paul spread the gospel because he believed that the grace which was sufficient to save a sinner like him was adequate for anyone. 2. A sense of obligation. The apostle never lost sight of how far God's grace had brought him. He frequently reminded followers of his role in persecuting the church. Paul's gratitude for salvation from that former life never waned. 
The Book of Acts records the almost constant turmoil and heartache of his travels. And yet he kept praising the Lord for the privilege of serving. 3. A sense of dependence. To describe the source of his strength, Paul used these words, By the grace of God I am what I am. He knew what it was like to depend upon one's own goodness and work to be religious, and he wanted no part of it. Paul desired more of Jesus and none of himself. 4. A spirit of absolute confidence. At the end of his life, Paul was as certain as ever that God was real, in charge, and worthy of all honor, glory, and praise. Do you see these attitudes in yourself? If not, borrow a page from the Apostle Paul's playbook. Praise the Lord for all that he has done for you, and then get busy working for his kingdom. Do not allow his grace to be poured out on your life in vain.